for every six students, one adult can go. Free of charge? Yes. Um, I, I want to ask um, what the timeline is on this for needing approval. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you why I'm asking, because like okay. Jerry, I have concerns about fundraising uh, um, and, and the ability for students who wouldn't uh, uh, be able naturally to afford this trip. Um, uh, I don't know that I feel convinced that there's a solid plan in place for that, and I, I might want to see one. Um, so. Um, prior to thinking about that in more detail, I'd like to know um, what the timeline is that this needs to be approved. We were planning not to do any kind of parent meeting until we had approval, so we were thinking about November. Uh, the January deadline is for the first early bird registration. I think the early bird registration is May. May uh, and I mean, students can still sign up, but uh, to get the triple points, it'd have to be by January. Um, and we also thought if we could do it before the holiday season, that would be good for uh, students to start getting things uh, for the holidays, whether it's monetary or uh, in terms of thinking ahead to luggage, that kind of thing. Can I just make a point here too? Yes. I'm so sorry. Uh, is this part of the regular curriculum? No. Is it required for kids to go? No. So I think that's an important difference between that. I know we want to have kids that have the option to go with that, but it is, it is a voluntary uh, piece. So, do you have any idea how many additional students might want to go that would be prevented by? I mean, how many students are in <coughs> taking Spanish versus the? I I don't have a number. No. I'd be interested in that too, because then maybe we mm -hmm. can seek at some resources mm -hmm. for those kids that really want to go. I definitely would like to look into, I know I had talked to um, Don Panaski last time, but it was too late. Mm -hmm. And now we're definitely early in the process that I think something could be set up and we'd have to set up a way to have students apply. I don't know how to do that without allowing everyone to apply. I don't know how to do that mm -hmm. where it's based on need. So I, those are questions that I have mm -hmm. right now. I've, I would look for expertise in that. Sure. Mr. Charles, I wonder question. if a service club could adopt this this group of kids. I don't know. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get it out there maybe in the paper saying a service group. Who knows? Yeah. Um, questions. What, what time of year is the trip? What time of year? Time of year. It's spring break for 2014. 2014. So we have a year and a half. You know, I, I think the question we have to think about is do we prevent the kids that can't afford it from going because there's some that won't be able to afford it? I don't know if that's right either. Um. I think it's a great opportunity for those that can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I don't disagree with that, Mr. Bodie. Um, I really don't. However, I would take issue with the fact that we are an equal opportunity educational system and that we should afford equal opportunity for all students, uh, not based on financial ability to pay. I think even our extracurriculars, we do have an obligation to try and make them accessible to all of our students' bodies and the student body in the way that we do for sports and many other things. And, and so uh, um, certainly while it's not a requirement, um, I would like to feel like we've at least done due diligence to, to make sure that we're reaching out. Um, well, that said, we could argue that we don't make it. We have activity fees that probably prevent some people from, some of our students from participating as well. And so, you know, but we do have scholarship. We have scholarship, scholarship programs related to those activities, though. I don't think we well. exclude any any student from participating because of economic fees. Yeah. So we have we have plans in place to address that and and. So I guess what my concern here is I don't see a plan in place to, to even look at that in, in a serious way at this point. Um, Could I comment? Yeah, please do, please more? do, yeah. Uh, we do have the parent meeting as just an information meeting, mm -hmm. and at that time we do find out the needs of the students who are interested, and, and then we do find out what parents are willing to help with that. <coughs> and we have, as I said, we have three 
opportunities for students on their own to do something. And then there are things like doing the restaurant that don't uh, involve a lot of, uh, of time commitment that we're able to do. So we do smaller things like that. But as I said in the past, when we have done those things, they, it, it depends on the student, but they, they don't, you know, they can have more monetary or not as much. Well, maybe we can work together to maybe iron out some of those differences to try to get it so, I think we understand that we want to try to get it so that we can offer it to as many kids as we can. And then maybe there's some other resources like service groups that can provide some of that offset for those costs. Should I would give that move a shot. we table this until such time as that information is gathered. So we have a motion to table this uh, until more information is gathered. Is there a second for that motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, is this a debatable motion? Oh, they are still there. They are still there. You're tabling it too? Oh, yeah, so we need a timeline. To what is the timeline, absolute timeline you would have to have a decision? Uh, the, the super early bird to get the triple reality of points, which is. Um, normally it's five dollars per student, uh, so double ten by May and fifteen dollars by I think it's January thirteenth. So if we table this till December, would that give you enough time? Uh, probably not. Is there any reason not to table it until this November? Okay, that's fine. Well, it's your motion, so you have to decide. Well, if we don't have enough time to go till December. I guess we will table it until then. Just a little clarity on the enough time. Are you saying that it won't be enough time for the for the discount or not enough time for our research? Uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be enough time for us to have a meeting and to get the students with the holidays, I think. For the research. Uh, to for us to come up with a plan for the board, is there enough time from now until December? Oh, yeah, that would probably be enough time. But yeah. that's not going to be past the timeline for the discounts. Right. Okay. I so mean, they have, okay. the longer you wait, the less of it. We should be okay if we wait, if you table until December. Okay, I'll table it until December, the regular board meeting in December. Okay, so then we'd be looking at the May. Well, we'll be looking at bringing this to the December board meeting. Okay. With the, the plan for approval. for approval. Right. And then okay. if they approve it in December, mm -hmm. that should be enough time for those kids to get those discounts too. I think it, I want to say, I don't know if I have it here exactly. I think it's the 13th of January. It says January 31st. Oh, is it the 31st? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I had that mixed up. Thank you. Yep. So I think we should be all right. Okay. It looks yeah, like the parameters are will, um, Am I correct in understanding that uh, this trip does not involve any school district funding, just no. an approval or support correct. by the school board? Correct. So. You're not asking us to expend school district funds. No. Um, no. Just approve the, the concept of the trip, and right. then financing will come from outside the district. Okay. Right. okay. Point of order: We have a motion to table, and I'm not sure it's debatable, so I want to be careful. Sorry. It's, 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 on it's only debatable as to when. So. So so when? So we, we have a we have a timeline of the motion to be in the December. Uh, um, work meeting uh, of the board. Um, we have a motion and a second uh, um, to table the motion. It's uh, not debatable. Um, so um, let's go ahead and do a roll call. I think we'll start there. And this is just to table the motion. It's not to approve or until the 8th. Until the 8th. December. December 17th. December 17th. December 17th. This may be tabling this motion too. Okay. Um, so it's a, uh, let's go ahead and do the roll call, Mr. Clerk. Uh, James Wolf. Abstain. And my point is, I don't think this requires board approval. There are no school funds involved. It's people deciding where their children are going to spend each 
Right. Yeah, sorry, it's, it's a non-debatable motion. Well, he, they're looking at me like, what? I don't see a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no dirty looks either. <laughs> I wasn't debating. I was explaining. So, <laughs> sorry. Well, it, is, uh, it is kind of a point of order or a, a parliamentary inquiry or whatever you want to call it. Is uh, Do we need to approve it is what I'm hearing. We better check our policies on field trips. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've asked this question before. I don't remember it being approved. Yeah. We, do the, we always the have. Band trips. We do the, this trip. We used to do a baseball trip. Mm -hmm. you, so. you could just table it, and during the process, I can go look Find it up out. and see whether or not yeah. it's in the parameters of the school. All right. Start again. James, <laughs> James Wolf? I abstain. Okay. It's going to pass. I, I mean, Terry Robichaud? Aye. Richard Olson? Aye. Jason Engbrett? Aye. Deb Davis? Aye. Tom Casper? Aye. And I will vote aye. Mr. Chairman, we have six in favor and one abstention. All right. Motion carries the table. Um, and uh, at this moment, I'll just add one comment. This is, this is not because in any way I don't think the trip would be anything less than amazing. That, that is not the point. It's about trying to make sure that uh, we bring that opportunity to as many states as possible. So uh, I am quite certain the trip will go on and be approved and, and all of that. Um, and I thank you very much for your time put into this. I don't mean to diminish that in any way. So thank you very much. Um, next item on the agenda. Um, consider approval of resolution for Minnesota State High School League Foundation application for grants for student participation. Um, is there is there a form for that, Kathy? There's nothing. Mm, there's nothing, nothing that it's in there. Patrick, nothing. No. It's a re it's the standard resolution that is done every year. Um, I didn't get that on there. I'm sorry, it's not. Yeah, it's done every fall. Have a re resolution in front of us. Um, is Ken here to tell us about mm -hmm. this resolution? I know it's one of those formality things, but I think uh, I have to table it for the next meeting. Yeah, I think we need to table that. So, um, uh, is there a motion to table this item until the next meeting? I so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to table this item until the next meeting when we'll have some more information. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, consider approval of Refugee School Impact Grant. Um, I see some information here on this one, so I'm going to read if you want to come forward. Faribault Public Schools has applied for a Refugee School Impact Grant from the Office of Refugee and Resettlement from the Department of Human Services in the amount of $22,500 to serve recent high school age refugees through after school programming. The funding parameters do require the age and new to country criteria when and what services are to be provided. As of October 1st, 2012, Faribault Schools identified 32 students who, meet, who met the ORR school impact grant criteria. We anticipate that about 25 students will attend after school programming regularly. It's 4.5 hours a week, three days a week, so 90 minute blocks. Uh, it is intensive English language training offered with homework help and with uh, uh, the introduction of a curriculum that is designed to move students who are um, behind in terms of English literacy skills and acquisition from point A to point B a little quicker. Uh, so just in terms of what the funds will be spent on, it's, it's about $900 a student. So I did the math, that's times 25. I didn't want to project that all 32 students would come regularly. Um, so that is 22,500. Some of that will be spent on hiring some EL, EL uh, specialists to deliver services to those refugees and the purchase of a curriculum called Rigor. That's it. So I, I just, I'm not sure I understand here completely. Okay. So is this a grant we are applying for or a grant we have? 
We have applied for it. The lead time was very, very short, so I wasn't able to get it to the Finance Committee in time. Okay. My apologies for that. So we're approving the application of the yes. grant. And normally we'd go through Finance Committee, yes. but timing kept that from yep. happening. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now I understand. Any other questions, Mayor? How, how does a student become eligible? <clears throat> a student becomes eligible in that they've arrived to this country uh, as of October 2009 or later as a refugee. So the, the group that we have in Faribault as a part of our community are the Somalis uh, from Kenya, a camp in Kenya. And so these are students that haven't had much formal education, is that right? Probably not in the refugee camps, no. I think just to add to this, one of the pieces that I think was really, we were very fortunate to have was the, the formation of this FAIR committee that you've heard in our community that is represent representative of, a, of many different nonprofits within the, within the entire community. And as a result of that committee and then also all the work that Ann has done with this process, she was able to secure this <coughs> $22,000 grant for some extended education for, for these kids. So. It was a very collaborative effort on behalf of all those entities. It really was. Yeah, thanks. Outstanding. Thank you, Marie. Yep. Any other questions for Marie before she goes to sit down? Um, and we do need to take action on this item. Um, so I will entertain a motion uh, to approve the Refugee School Impact Grant. So moved. moved. Second. And a second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, any further <coughs> questions or discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, next on the agenda, consider setting special board meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, I skipped over. Superintendent evaluation. Um, uh, Mr. Robichaud, would yes. you like to update uh, us? Where the we evaluation are? is completed. I uh, have all the um, uh, feedback from people who um, were asked to participate in the evaluation. Uh, I have done an analysis of that uh, data and uh, I've met with uh, Tom and Jason uh, to review that. Uh, I would like to um, recommend that we go into a closed session at the next board meeting in November to go through that evaluation and prepare a uh, public statement regarding the superintendent evaluation for his first year uh, performance. Um, as superintendent of 656. Right, any questions for Jerry on this item? And do you understand what the plan is to, to do? And, and for your information, it is legal for us to go into a closed session for performance evaluation as long as we bring the um, summary of that uh, to the next board meeting. All right. Excellent. Okay. Um, December board meeting, I think, right? If we meet in close session, the, the results will come out in December. December. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, next is uh, consider setting a special board meeting to canvas votes for November 13th at 4 p.m. at the district office or conference room. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. And a second. Second. Um, just so everyone, and including the audience, is aware, this is simply a, a, a meeting for the board to. Uh, address um, the item, uh, uh, I'm sorry, to confirm the re election results. Uh, there's not much to this meeting. Um, any further questions on that? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. We didn't have to vote on having that closed session. No. 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 Okay. Um, uh, the item that we added, um, I wanted to bring uh, to the board's attention. Mr. Chair. Yes. I will leave the board at this time. I'm not going to be part of this witch hunt. All right. Um, uh, let the minutes reflect that uh, Mr. Olson is leaving. Um, so I apologize uh, that this came so late. Um, I wanted the uh, board to be aware of some comments that have been made um, by one of our board members in uh, um, uh, recent uh, months. 
uh, there is a mistake in these uh, um, uh, here in terms of the dates that are on here. Uh, um, are uh, uh, say 2011 on all the dates when they should in fact say 2012. These are letters to the editor by Mr. Olson. Um, I have put uh, um, the policies uh, here. Um, I'm bringing this to the board uh, because I became aware of this weekend of the last letter to the editor by Mr. Olson. Um, I've been approached many times over, over recent months um, uh, regarding um, items uh, that Mr. Olson has, has written about um, by many community members. I think uh, um, virtually everyone at this table has at some point come to me to express their concern uh, about um, the seri this series of, of letters. Um, and so uh, uh, I thought it was important that we uh, address it, particularly when it pertains to an important matter that's coming before the, the city, um, before our community uh, in the upcoming week. So, um, to, to look at this in part, there's, there's uh, um, five items here, um, uh, which include, um, I'm sorry, there's four items here, three letters to the editor that have occurred over the last three months. There were many before that, as you know, um, and uh, uh, a piece of literature from uh, a committee, um, and at the bottom, uh, it's hard to see there, but it does have Mr. Olson's name on it and his uh, position as a school board member. Um, uh, and, and so I want us to, uh, um, to think about um, uh, our board policies. Um, I'm concerned about whether or not they may have been violated. Uh, number 209, the Code of Ethics, talks about supporting board decisions, um, even if a position is different of a particular board member. Um, it also talks about recognizing the integrity of all the people on the board and then predecessors to the board and, and doing their work with integrity. Um, and uh, making no disparaging remarks in or out of school board meetings uh, about other members of the school board or their opinions. And uh, to be clear, this is uh, not something I'm, I'm coming up with now that I think should be here. This is, this is board policy. Um, additionally, I, uh, um, there is a, in our statement of guiding principles, and, and you have the full uh, um, policies in, in front of you, um, it says they shall also ensure that the community be informed of the needs, purposes, and values and the status of the schools. And to me, that comment means that uh, we shall do our utmost to uh, um, make comments that reflect the best information that we have, that are as accurate and, uh, um, and uh, careful as we can make them so that uh, we are working to uh, inform the community and not misinform the community. Um, I'm going to point out uh, a number of the items because I think they're important. Uh, that are contained in these letters to the editor and, and this literature. Um, I'm also informed today, I didn't realize that the, there are a number of, of uh, um, ads that have appeared in the paper uh, with Mr. Olson's name in them that contain much of the same information and, and I think it's important. Um, uh, when I go to part five, I'm gonna sort of work uh, from the back to the front. Um, there are items in here that talk about uh, um, the board has the ability to roll back salaries and free salaries and cut administration uh, the cut administration salaries. Um, this just raises concerns for me. These are all groups that we need to negotiate with um, and uh, to imply that perhaps we could do this unilaterally or to imply um, outside of the negotiating table what should happen uh, raises concerns to me. Um, but more concerning to me is the, the phrase stop paying bonuses. Um, I think this board knows that there has never been a bonus paid to any member of this district at any time. Uh, that is a gross mischaracterization, mischaracterization, and I don't know how it can be accomplishing anything except to um, misinform the community. Um, in parts uh, two, three, and four, you <coughs> see some letters to the editor, uh, many disparaging comments made about members of this board, um, and many disparaging comments made about uh, decisions made by this board in particular with re reference to the, uh, um, to the teacher's contract. Um, an implication that, again, there are bonuses being paid to teachers, um, that attorney fees are, have been increasing dramatically. In fact, it's just the opposite over the last three years. Our attorney's fees have gone down, and I think it's unfortunate that we would imply anything other than that um, to our community. Um, but this, this most recent letter that has me um, the most concerned, um, I had heard about a number of these things. Uh, um, being stated unofficially, but uh, um, when I saw them in print, I thought it was really important that we talk about them. 
Um, in this letter, I have uh, underlined some of these things. Uh, in it, it is implied that the board unanimously voted, if you look at the bottom of my underlining, a hard salary freeze for the staff as a part of the budget. Um, I think that implies that this board at any point approved a hard salary freeze, uh, which we simply could not do before we sat down to the negotiation table. Uh, we made a decision uh, not to put uh, salary changes into the budget because we did not have that information at that time. Um, that's very different than the saying that we chose a, a, a hard salary freeze and then uh, reversed ourselves by uh, um, uh, settling on the contract that we did. Um, many times, Mr. Olson has, has uh, uh, stated that we are going way over budget on community education. Um, and I think that's, that's a, um, a very unfortunate statement to make. Uh, we were uh, contracting with the city for an amount of $161,000. We brought that back to our, our district in order to spend uh, within the district uh, still on community education. Um, the, district, the community education budget is in fact much larger than $161,000. It's more like $1.7 million. It has not changed. None of it can be spent in the general um, education fund. None of it could be used to uh, solve the, the budget challenges that we face. Um, and to imply anything else uh, is simply inaccurate. Um, uh, additionally here, uh, there are uh, 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 statements about buyouts of former employees and union grievances and creating high legal expenses. Again, our legal expenses have gone down. Um, but more importantly, uh, uh, this district, uh, as a school board, we are at times um, uh, faced with making very difficult decisions that are often not uh, choosing between the lesser of, of two difficult decisions. And I think it's very unproductive to uh, um, comment on the buyouts of former employees uh, when I don't think anyone on the, the board took any joy in, in, in those difficult positions we were placed in. But the one I want to highlight the most um, is uh, um, the, the comment that this board plans to add administrative positions, uh, five additional assistant principals. Um, this one strikes me the most. Uh, I have been involved in discussions about what the levy will uh, encompass for many months. At no time do I recall being part of any conversation that we would ha uh, add administrators. Um, that is simply false. And it bothers me tremendously that a member of this board would go out in public and claim that this board um, has lied to the community about our intentions. That is well beyond the pale, in my opinion. Um, and so I thought it was important that I bring this. Uh, that is, by the way, also apparently appearing in ads in the Daily News, um, which I find um, uh, very distasteful in my mind that uh, uh, one of our board members would choose to um, cast aspersions on this board that we are misrepresenting ourselves to the community. Um, and so I thought these were very serious accusations being made by Mr. Olson. Unfortunately, he's not here now um, to comment on them. I did not bring these here to you tonight for, for any action. Um, they were brought to my attention and I wanted to make sure that we noted them. Um, I am interested in any comments that you might have. Um, and then I also think that we should discuss whether or not uh, we may want to pursue the ideas of other actions uh, in the future. So um, I'll stop talking now and open this up to any comments from, from the rest of the board. Mr. Chair, um, you articulated very well uh, the concerns that have been expressed uh, by people in the community as well as myself as one of the subjects of Mr. Olson's letters to the editor. And uh, you discussed and presented a, a very solid uh, reason why it's important for us to bring this up now and not wait uh, later, that there's misinformation, incorrect information um, that have been presented uh, in letters to the editors. Uh, and uh, as one of the subjects of Mr. Olson's letters to the editor, uh, editors, I would like your permission to uh, make some comments. Please, um, please do. And I, if you're more comfortable, I will stand away from the board uh, table and go to the podium or can do it here, um, whatever your comfort level would be. Uh, I think it's an agenda item, so I'm comfortable with you addressing it. Um, I feel like I'm talking to the empty chair here. Um, but I do hope that Mr. Olson will um, <clears throat> uh, look at the uh, tape uh, <coughs> later uh, when he's had a chance to uh, reflect on uh, what he's been saying. And, 
Let me start by uh, clarifying that I'm speaking for myself, uh, no other board member or for the board member as a whole. I support Mr. Olson's uh, right to uh, freedom of speech. I so exercise that and uh, thank goodness we live in a country where that can take place. Uh, Mr. Olson has chosen to exercise that right with his letters to the editor. I now choose to exercise my right to freedom of speech by making some comments tonight. Mr. Olson, I find it concerning that you would actively campaign for my defeat in this up and coming election. I just, uh, it, it's very concerning that uh, that would take place. When Mr. Olson ran for re-election two years ago, I showed him respect and did not make any public comments for or against his election. In spite of our different views, which I know we do have different views. I respect his right to run for the school board. As a matter of fact, when Mr. Olson won re-election, I called him and offered my congratulations and offered an olive branch to work together for the improvement of our education for our students in the school district. He accepted that olive branch. During the time that we have served together on this school board, I have been respectful of Mr. Olson during our disagreements, our discussions, and our decisions. I have always will continue to respect his right to vote as he wishes. But also, I expect that we as board members would honor the decisions that are made collectively. I have fulfilled my offer of reaching out to Mr. Olson, and that's why I find it concerning about his public comments about my re-election. In my opinion, he has reduced this election to the level of partisan politics that has no place in a school board election period. Partisan politics do not belong at this level of government. We are not conservatives, we are not liberals, as Mr. Olson claims we are. Our purpose, anyone's purpose, of serving on a school board should be to provide direction and setting policy that will ensure that our students receive the best education they can by highly competent and appropriately compensated teachers who care about teaching and learning and have nothing but the compassion for students. And I can think of no teacher in this district who does not have that as their absolute mission. I want to make it very clear to Mr. Olson and others in the audience and anyone listening that my sole purpose of serving on the school board is to in fact assure that students are receiving that high quality education. For anyone to presume otherwise is dead wrong. Moreover, I would hope that anyone sitting here at this table or running for the school board has that as their same goal. As to the notion that he has made a couple of times in some of the letters to the editors that I'm a tax and spend PhD, I find that disconcerting. First, on a personal note, I have worked hard and my family has sacrificed much for my education. I'm darn proud of it and I'm proud of what I've accomplished. And for him to demean that education is insulting. Also, when it comes to funding education, if the individuals in St. Paul would live up to their commitment to fund education at the levels that is supposed to be, we would not have to go to our taxpayers for relief. Mr. Olson has attended many, many MSBA conferences, and he knows how grossly underfunded public education is. That's on their agenda every time you go to an MSBA conference is we need more money for public education in the state of Minnesota. And with that knowledge, I find it very, very confusing how Mr. Olson can be against the levy. I want to say one last thing, and that with the time remaining to the election, it is my hope that we will keep the dialogue civil and respectful and speak the facts. I fully intend to, and I hope Mr. Olson will as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Robichaud. Um, I, I want to uh, um, stay focused on, on uh, the particular comments that we have in front of us um, uh, that I think um, 
speaking for myself, go well beyond attacks on, on myself and Mr. Robichaud and, and go to attacks on, on uh, this board and decisions uh, that we have made in the integrity of this board uh, to claim that this board uh, plans to do something other than what we have told the community we plan to do is nothing less than an attack on the integrity of uh, all the members of this board. Um, is there anything else that anyone would like to say? regards to this. Well, for what, Mr. Chairman? Please, Mr. Uh, I noticed in our code of uh, ethics uh, that in our guiding principles, we don't have any recourse that we talk about you know, when somebody breaks these code of ethics. Are you aware of any, or is it possible to add them, or where? What are the legal ramifications? Well, this is a second question, I think, for us to, to consider tonight about whether or not this board wants to pursue this. Um, boards do have the ability to uh, um, censure board members. Um, it's a serious issue. It's a serious legal issue. Um, I, uh, I think it is very true to say that uh, anyone has a right, their First Amendment right, to say what they wish. Um, I would add to that. Um, that having a First Amendment right to say what you, what you wish does not absolve you from any consequences of what you say. Um, and uh, um, when you say things that are patently false about the actions of this, uh, of this board, um, and when you um, actively violate board policy after uh, repeated discussions, uh, this is, as you know, we have uh, uh, dis uh, discussed this with Mr. Olson in past meetings, trying to be less public about it, but uh, nevertheless, um, <clears throat> trying to stress the importance of what it means to work together as a board. Um, uh, I think uh, um, there's very little reason to, to believe that this was a simple mistake or an honest mistake after repeated uh, times. So I think there's a question for this board about whether or not we would like to consider um, a matter of censure. It's not something that we would ever take action on uh, tonight. It is a legal matter, so if we were to do so, I think the procedure would be for us to instruct uh, Superintendent Sesker um, to, uh, I have uh, spoken with MSBA about what this would entail. Uh, their advice is to contact our <coughs> attorneys and to ask them to uh, 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 give us uh, legal advice on what a censure, <coughs> what the grounds are for censure in light of the board policy and what actions uh, um, a censure might uh, imply what uh, what the impacts of a censure uh, would be on, on that board member. Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't have more information than that, but I think that would be the question for us tonight is whether or not we want to instruct um, uh, Superintendent Sesker, um, and we can do that simply by conveying the wishes. I can, uh, as chair, I can instruct him to do so. Um, um, but I, I want to have a sense that we're uh, whether or not uh, this board is interested in pursuing that or if we're interested in, uh, um, for the sake of, uh, um, well, I'm not sure why we wouldn't be interested in it, but perhaps people have a reason for why we might not be interested in it. And so um, I would certainly, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking for feedback on that from this board so that uh, um, I know what the feelings of this board are and whether or not we want to pursue this. Because I think it does take this to a more serious level we decide to go that route, you know, we need to decide if that's uh, important for the board to do. Well, I'm more concerned about the future going forward, and uh, I'd like our policy committee to uh, investigate uh, what kinds of actions can be taken when a board member, any time in the future, uh, breaks this code of ethics and our guiding principles and incorporate it into uh, our policies so that going forward any board member coming on knows what the ramifications are for uh, grossly uh, abusing uh, the policies. I think I would say that's probably not a question for our policy committee which has no expertise in that, but it's probably a, a, a question for our attorneys. Yeah. But I'm, what, what I'm saying is, uh, the policy we should get it written. In, we should get it written into our <coughs> policies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. 
as well. So as a person who's not seeking re-election, so I guess I've avoided being part of the tax and spend uh, label here, and I don't have a PhD, but, um, but you do have a doctor. I do have a doctor of science. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I guess I, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm as offended, I think, as anyone else, but I, before I make a statement as to whether or not I'd, I'd want to pursue censure or some other type activity, I would have to sleep on it a little bit, so. Well, and I think the question, what I would like, the, the only thing <coughs> I would suggest that we advise Superintendent Sesker to do is to, uh, uh, to pursue information on whether or not, uh, 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 whether or not we want to seek a, a censor action, I think is a, is a whole nother step. I think the first thing is to get some more information on what that would mean. Um, but I, mean, I certainly respect if you still would like to sleep on that. Uh, um, I, I don't know because it's not, a, it's not an actionable item. We don't need an action to ask for information from our attorneys. Um, I can do this at, at any point uh, um, should the board uh, uh, convey that. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I would um, concur with that. I, I would like the superintendent to check and see, you know, has there been violations of our policy? We assume there have been, but you know, let's Absolutely. have a legal interpretation yep. of that to find out if there has been, and then bring that back to me with some options of what are available to us as a board member, as a board, as a board uh, to address this. I too, uh, Howard, am very concerned about the future. Um, you know, the makeup of the board may be a little different after November. Sixth, um, and it may not be so significantly different. But I think as we move forward here, this board is going to have to face some further critical decisions. I think it's important to understand what options are available. So I too am very concerned about the future. Thank you. I think many boards do have provisions for removing uh, board members for different causes, <coughs> and uh, we just don't have the bottom line. I think, um, uh, just to clarify, I think censure is not a removal, um, and I think removal is, is beyond our legal power. I'm, I'm quite clear on that, that uh, as an elected official, we have no power to, to remove a, a sitting board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like more information. Okay. As a... Um, <clears throat> member of the majority in a number of references in these letters and ads in the paper and whatnot, I am discouraged by the, not the, the right to disagree, but by the tone of the disagreement. And <clears throat> I share with, I, I thank Mr. Robichaud for eloquently stating the, the purpose of being on this board, which is to try to ensure a quality education for all the students of this district. And <clears throat> to use only one example to be thought or suggested that I or any other member of this board has squandered the taxpayers' hard-earned money, I find discouraging, offensive, but more discouraging in that we've had a number of spirited discussions about how we should proceed and address the needs in this district. And everyone, we have not all just agreed at any one time, I don't believe, but we have come to a consensus or a group, not, I take consensus back, a group decision. And, um, I think that the summary of policies that is provided here have uh, been violated in spirit, if not in letter, and uh, I am supportive of the, at least the investigation of how this board should address these types of issues. It is one thing to speak as a citizen 
and we all have that right and I have nothing but respect for everyone's right to do that. But when you sign your messages as a member of the school board, um, while the, the, the title may be accurate, it is, does not necessarily reflect the board process nor the board decision. So I think there's, I'm concerned in that regard as well. So I get, I'm not saying it concisely, but I'm, I'm supportive of what, Jason, you seem to be suggesting that we at least look at uh, this situation, get some legal advice, and I'm also very encouraged by what Howard said earlier of being concerned for the future because the future is gonna contain as many or more challenges as we have dealt with in my two years on the board and my years of watching the board. And unless we can work together, uh, we're, we will not have as nearly as great a uh, chance of success of meeting those challenges. And uh, whatever disrupts, you know, I'm not trying to discourage disagreement. I'm encouraging disagreement, but I'm also encouraging the process um, by which we as a group trying to come to some collective wisdom about the issues that face us. Well said, Tom. <clears throat> All right, any other questions or comments? I think I'm going to take the comments here as an indication that we would like to ask Superintendent Sesker to um, seek out information from our, 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 our legal. I don't think we need a motion. We don't need a motion. Uh, I can direct him to do so. I just want to say my, my feeling of the table is seeking information is appropriate at this stage. Decisions on whether or not we would seek any action um, are left for a further discussion. Um, I'm not implying tonight we should decide. I think we, we all need more information before we can uh, make a decision about whether or not it's appropriate to seek any action. But we can't make that decision without knowing what that might, might entail. So. I'm going to direct uh, Superintendent Sesker to seek out that information for us, and that will be shared um, with the entire board when it, when it comes from our, our, uh, our legal advice. Um, any other comments on this item before, before I move on? Can we add MSBA's Code of Ethics to the policy meeting for next? Just as a, a last comment, um, I want to be very clear that I take no joy in um, bringing this item to the board. Um, uh, I have been approached about having this discussion many, many times, um, and I felt the, um, in particular when a line was craw crossed and blatant information that is false was put out there, um, uh, questioning the integrity of this board, I felt like it had to be addressed. So. Um, I thank you all for your, your patience and your time in, in addressing this issue. I'm, I'm sorry that Mr. Olson would, would not stay here to uh, um, be a part of this discussion with us. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to move on to the final things. Uh, um, other items of information. Uh, we do not have our student, student representative with us here tonight. Um, school board members, uh, items of information. Um, one item I would mention I have a, a sheet here someplace from the Southeast Service Cooperative asking for nominations to serve on their board. Um, this is a cooperative, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's a cooperative where we uh, work with this cooperative to purchase services uh, as a district so that we can reduce costs by working with others. Is that correct or am I? They, they have a number of different things. They have its professional development, it's um, legislative updates, it's financial updates, it's um, a, a variety of, it's like the South Central. Yeah. So if anyone has any interest in, in serving on that, I would be happy to nominate you um, for service on that, uh, on that board. Um, any other items of information? Quick for question, uh, do you have any uh, information about the, the level of obligation to serve on that board? Is it a monthly meeting, a quarterly meeting? <laughs> what I have is a pamphlet I can hand you. <laughs> I would, I'm happy to to hand that over to you and, and you can let me know what you think based upon that. Thank you. Are, are you looking for a nomination, Mr. Casper? I'm inquiring um. for information. <laughs> 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 um, any other questions uh, or items that you, any board members would like to share? I'd like to ask Ken a question. 
the football team won Friday night. When's our next game? And it, here? Here against Catherine. Okay. And is there, how about Faribault BA? Are they at home also? No, they're not. They're not, okay. And then the volleyball <laughs> team. <laughs> I thought we might have to share the same. So they beat Winona? Okay. Doing great. I'm very happy. By the way, our sympathies go to the communities of Waterville, Leisure, Morristown, the death of that young man. They don't have We're talking about the drowning that happened. So, yeah. Any other. Any other comments from board members? All right, uh, superintendent. Uh, just one thing. Uh, we actually, I, I know a lot of you put your computers away, um, and this is going to be a challenge for Howard on Robert's rules of order. We actually do now have the resolution for the Minnesota State High School League Foundation application for grants mm -hmm. for scholarships. I saw it. I sent it to everyone's <laughs> email as an attachment. <laughs> if you'd like me to read the resolution or, or um, Jason, if you want to read the resolution, if you see that, it'd be well, nice to go back and approve I think we need that. to get a, uh, uh, a ruling on whether or not once we've tabled it, we can untable it. Yeah, we can take it off the table again, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I have one issue, though, since there's one board member not here. Mm -hmm. We still have a quorum. Who, right, but I don't know if he would. Majority can lay it on the table, and majority can take it off the table. I think we have a quorum, and that board member chose to leave, so. Okay. Just making sure so, everything's... So we need, before we do anything, I think we need a motion. Yep. Uh, we can't debate it or talk about it until we have a motion to untable, put it back. I'm not sure what the official motion is. So, so is what it? are we taking off? Uh, we're, we're putting, putting on the on. table. We're bringing back. We're bringing back um, the item that we tabled, which was, to clarify... 10A. No, 10B. 10B. Minnesota 10B. State High School League. Oh. To flip um, screen. Grant for student participation. Mm -hmm. yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we remove from the table uh, resolution 10B to consider approval of resolution for Minnesota State High School League Foundation application for grant for student participation. Okay, we have a motion to remove this item from the table. Is there a second? Second. second. We have a motion and a second. It's a non debatable item. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Um, so now that we have it back on the table, Ken, would you like to enlighten us as to what this motion is about? And yes. <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to apologize. Uh, I actually was homesick all day today and just watching on the uh, watching on TV and saw you table it <laughs> and kind of panicked for a couple of reasons. Uh, this is the third or fourth year that we've had this in front of you. Uh, this is uh, the State High School League Foundation. This is from from uh, taxes from state tournaments and all that kind of uh, those kinds of things. This is set aside for for use for the foundation or those taxes are set aside for use but uh, by the foundation. And uh, we are allowed to apply for dollars from that that we, as a school district, have used to provide scholarships to those kids who cannot pay for activities otherwise. It, uh, the past couple of years, it's been about uh, somewhere between $1,600 and $2,000. And so you know, that's kind of significant. That's why I came down here to make sure that uh, we, be, be, because the, 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 the challenge is we have to use our October Mars numbers uh, so we have to wait until then, and then it has to be in by November 1st. So if it wasn't passed today, we're out that money. Well, I'm, Move I'm, approval. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. We do acknowledge that Mr. Hubert came out of the sick bed. Let him go home. The minutes will reflect the, the efforts of Mr. Hubert to, to help out Mr. Thomas. Thank you so much for, for coming and, and saving us on this. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, any further discussion? Just thanks to Drew, too. We're able to pull that out oh, of the, you, the yeah. internet site to thank grab it much. and send it to you guys, too. So thanks, Drew. Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Roll call. Uh, uh, roll, roll, roll call. Sorry, it's a resolution. We need a roll call. Yeah. Uh, James Wolf. 
Aye. Jerry, Jerry Robichaud. Aye. Jason Ingbert. Aye. Deb Davis. Aye. Tom Casper. Aye. And I vote aye. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, six in favor, zero against. All right. Thank Motion you. carries. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks, Thanks Ken. Ken. All right. Um, we're down to the very last thing. Uh, um, dates to remember. Um, November 5th. Sorry, just not the very last thing, Superintendent. <laughs> sorry. We I don't, I, that. Yeah, it's fine. I just wanted yes. to send our condolences to Waterville Legion Morristown yeah. for the tragic death yes. in that community and, and them dealing with it. So um, we do support them, and, and hopefully they're, they're making their way through this. But I did want to make that public announcement. Otherwise, I don't have anything else. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Uh, okay. Um, next, dates to remember. Uh, November 5th at 5.30 uh, in the district office, there will be a, a, a school board work session. Uh, November 6th uh, is election day. Uh, November 12th, uh, go out and vote. Um, November 12th is Veterans Day. Um, November 13th, uh, which is a Tuesday, uh, an abnormal day for board meetings um, uh, made necessary because of Veterans Day. Um, on November 13th at 7.30 a.m. will be the um, finance meeting in the district office. Uh, November 13th at 4 p.m. will be the special board meeting um, uh, to canvas uh, the election results again at the district office. Uh, again, on November 13th at 5 p.m. will be a policy meeting uh, at the district office. Uh, on November 19th at 4, 4, 5 p.m. will be the curriculum committee um, at the district office. And on November 19th, um, well, we will be right back here at City Council Chambers um, for our regular board meeting at 6.30 p.m. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, second. second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We are adjourned.